And if you apply these five tips, you're gonna see an instant improvement in the quality of your portrait just taken with your phone. Welcome back everyone. If you don't know me, my name is Simone. I'm an Italian professional photo videographer. And in this video, I want to show you five tips to improve the quality of your portraits just using your phone. Because the reality is that everyone thinks that you need expensive gear, that you need to spend a lot of money in light equipment. And yes, it's true. If you have these kind of expensive equipment, if you know how to use them, it could improve the quality of your portraits. But trust me, you can take great photos even using your smartphone. And I proved this quite a lot already in this YouTube channel and also in my mobile photography course. So without further ado, let's start with the first one. And the first one is that when you're taking portrait just using your phone, you need to use the two pair camera. That means the zoom camera that you have already built in in your phone. But be very careful. Don't zoom in by pinching in with your fingers. Because if you go beyond what is the optical zoom that you have already in your phone, you're just going to crop the picture and you're going to lose quality. So it's important to understand the characteristics of your phone. For example, I have an iPhone 11 Pro Max and this one has only a two pair. Now newer iPhones might have like a three pair or you might have a different kind of smartphone that has maybe a built-in four pair camera, but do not go over that hardware limit that you have. Now you want to use that zoom because in the same time, when we're using a professional camera, we use a longer lens for photography. So instead of using a wide lens, we use a zoomed in lens. Because first of all, when you use a wide lens, you're gonna have a face that is distorted. So more like squished from the side. And when you use a longer lens, you'll be able to blur that background much more than you, if you're using a wide lens. Now, let me give you an example, just using the phone to let you understand why. So I'm just using this cap as a subject. Think as it was like a portrait. So if I use the one pair here on my phone, then yes, the Sony cap is in focus and everything else is blurred, but it's not much blurred and the background doesn't look really nice. But when we move from one to two pair, then we see that the background is much more compressed. I'm closer obviously to the subject and the background is more blurred, which makes the overall photo much nicer than it was one, at least if we're talking about portrait. If you're talking about landscape, then it's a different story. The second tip that I wanna give you is about using a tripod when you're taking photos. And the reason lies into how camera work. And I don't wanna go too technical, but the concept is that when there is very low light, then our phone's camera adjust automatically in order to see the subject that you have in that low light situation. And to do this, they'll reduce the shutter speed. And reducing the shutter speed means that yes, you have more light, but you need to be more still where you're taking that photo, otherwise the image will come out blurred. I'm not sure if you ever noticed when you're in night mode that it takes like a second or maybe two seconds to take that photo. All right, that's the reason why. Let me give you an example. So I have a tripod right here. Now I wanna try to take a photo in a dark situation. So where the camera is right there is pretty dark because the light is coming from here. So what I do is I try to lift up, let's say, okay, this is a little bit too much, but it's just an example, remember. I'm just gonna do this, so increase the light. And now when I move, you can see much more blur that instead if I darken the image, let's say, let's take a photo of this instead. So it's much brighter and you don't see that much blur as before anymore. And this means that we can shoot that photo in a much faster way than we're shooting, for example, this photo. As you can see, can you see much more blur? Because the shutter speed, it's slower. So in this case, you want to have a tripod and then you snap a photo on the tripod so to make sure that this is not gonna be blurred. So let me show you what happens when I take a photo that requires a tripod and is not having a tripod. So let's put it like this and then I'm moving a little bit, okay? Just to show you what happens and this is the result, it's blurred. Instead, this one is not blurred. You get what I mean? Now, the next tip is about using portrait mode. And you gotta be careful even when using portrait mode for the same reason as we mentioned before. But obviously having a blurred background is pretty useful, let's say, because it really emphasizes the face of the subject, your subject in general, and tries to blur that background that is only distracting the viewer. And even when you're using portrait mode, just have a look around all the different type of lighting that your phone offers. Now, if you have an older model, 
available. You might not have all these options, but this one is already, you know, two or three years old and I have a few options. So try to play around with these and see which one works best and which one doesn't work well. But obviously when you apply the portrait mode, it's always best to apply all the other tips and the following two that we are mentioning. Now the fourth tip is about actually an app, not directly shooting, but it's something that you can use in post-production. And this is called Remini. What Remini is, is basically an app that allows to reduce the blur of your photos if you've taken, for example, a portrait in not ideal situation. This app helps you make it sharper. So once you open the app, you wanna go in Enhance, and then you're gonna select your own photo, whatever you wanna pick. Let's say this photo, and then you click OK. You just need to wait a little bit. And once it's done, this is the result that you got. This is the before, and this is the after before and after. Let's have a look at my face before and after. You see such an incredible difference. Now it doesn't work extremely well every single time, but it's worth giving it a try. And this is just the first enhancing. Then you can go eventually enhancing the second part and then do it again. And the fifth tip for better portrait with your phone, it's all about lighting. Lighting is the number one most important element regarding photography. And it's more important even than having a better phone and having a better camera. If you can, one of the best things you can do, best investment for your photography is buying one of these cheap Amazon lights that cost around 40 or $50 max, or you can take two of them for like 60 or 70, and it'll make a huge difference in your photos. In my career, before before being sponsored by Nightlight with professional lighting, I was using those $50 Amazon light and they are amazing. Otherwise you can use something like this, so it's a ring light. But if you don't want to invest in such a light because maybe you're moving or whatever, then the best way is always try to stay in the shadow. So whenever there is a bright day, stay in the shadow, very close to a window, maybe with a plain background or with something else in the background. But it's super important that when we talk about portraits in order to exploit the potential of our smartphone, we need to have the best light possible. So if you don't want to invest in light, you can stay out in the sun, but in the shadow. You can stay outside or inside in the shadow, not in the sun directly. Otherwise, it's gonna create some weird shadows in your face and your body. Unless, obviously, it's that kind of effect that you wanna go for. Actually, the ideal weather is having clouds in the sky. This will gonna help you have a much smoother light in your face when you're taking portraits. Or the last solution, which is super cheap, but it works pretty well as well, is getting a ring light. Now, if I need to pick from a ringlet or the Amazon light, I will pick the Amazon light because there's a bigger diffusion, but this also works extremely well. And as you can see from this video, even though we're taking with a camera, some of the photos are pretty good. And this was my fifth tip for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, don't forget to leave it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in this video. Ciao.